Everything you experience is rooted in desire. And because our desires are all over the place, it means our experiences are all over the place. If we want to accomplish something, we have to learn how to bring some order to our desires, have a set of priorities, what's most important, what's less important, and learn how to stick to those priorities. That's what determination is all about. We read in the autobiographies of the Ajans, they talk a lot about determination. Usually it seems to be having to do with the times when they put forth a special effort. Special effort meaning an especially energetic effort. But there's another kind of special effort which also underlies the practice and actually is more important. And that's the effort that you stick with. On the days when you feel like practicing, you practice. On the days when you don't feel like practicing, you practice. When things are going well, you practice. When things are not going well, you practice. That stick to attentiveness. That requires all of the qualities that the Buddha said go into good determination, starting with discernment. Most of us are like sprinters in our practice. We put forth extra effort for a while and then we kind of collapse. Rest. And then we put forth some more effort and then rest. We have to think of ourselves as long distance meditators. We're in this for the long haul. We have to learn how to pace ourselves to figure out what kind of effort we can maintain on a consistent basis and then stick with it. John Fu made a comment one time, it's a pun in Thai. It said, Gan Pani Bhad Bhin Rung Nit, the Dong Tam Bhin Nit. The practice is something small, but it's something you have to do consistently. The word nit can have both meanings, small and consistent. Because all you really ask to do is maintain awareness of your body. Keep your awareness rooted right here. As you go through the day, as you meditate, as you're not doing formal meditation, you want to be right here. Have a sense of the breath energy in the body and what feels good as you breathe in breathe out. That's not asking very much. But for it to have some power, you have to stick with it. Otherwise, it just becomes one more thing you think about in the course of the day. You want to make this home base. And keep, keep reminding yourself that it's not far away, even when your thoughts go far, far away. There are thoughts that you are thinking in the present moment, right here, right now. And when you can make that switch from the content of the thought to the fact of the thought, or the activity of the thought, and then right next to the activity of the thought is the breath. So no matter how far your thoughts may roam, it doesn't take much to bring them back to the breath. Think of it that way. You're not having to haul it for miles and miles. There's nothing heavy that you have to drag. It's just moving your attention, changing your frame of reference, and then learning how to keep your frame of reference right here. This is why the Buddha talks again and again and again about establishing mindfulness. And once it's established, then you kind of keep it established. This has a lot to do with learning how to talk to yourself, which is another aspect of discernment. If your mind obeys only when you come down really hard, it's going to look for times to slip away, because you can't come down hard on yourself all the time. The mind will rebel. Part of it's a matter of learning to how to read what your mind needs. Think of the different kinds of horses that the horse trainer talked about. There are the horses that respond only to gentle treatment. There are the horses that respond only to harsh treatment. And there are those that respond to harsh and gentle treatment. And as the Buddha said, meditators are the same. For most of us, it's a combination of harsh and gentle, learning how to be encouraging. 
when you need to be encouraged, learn how to be a little bit strict. When the mind is beginning to get lazy, but not so strict that you get discouraged. Think of the verbs they used to describe how the Buddha taught. He instructed, urged, roused, encouraged. The instructions basically giving information and also coming down hard when you needed to. But then there's urging, rousing, encouraging, lifting your spirits. telling you that this, you're going to benefit from this, and you can do this. So look at how you talk to yourself and see what the mind responds to, and teach it to respond to gentle encouragement, because that's the kind of inner voice that can keep you at the practice in, out, in, out, in, out, up and down. Keep your mind in an even keel when everything else is in and out and up and down. So you see the discernment here covers all the other qualities of good determination as well, because you need to be discerning and how to be true to your determination, how to stick with it. You need to be discerning in what you're going to have to give up. As the mind wants to wander around, think about this, think about that. Ask yourself, how many times have you been thinking about these things? How many lifetimes have you allowed your mind to wander? Isn't it time for something new? Seeing what the mind is like when it stays comfortably in the present moment. You can watch itself in the present moment. And of course, discerning and how you calm the mind down when it begins to rebel. So it's a matter of combining discernment with effort. Think about that image of the, the loop player. You see what kind of energy you have, and then you make sure that you put in at least that much energy. There will be times when the body is sick. You're feeling weak, and you can't expect yourself to put in the same amount of hours and the same amount of pressure on your practice as you can when you're feeling healthy. And so you adjust the way you talk to yourself, but you don't give up. There's a book we have floating around in the monastery about how to swim. The reason we have it is because it gives very good instructions on how to have the right attitude toward a practice that you're going to stick with for a long period of time. And one of its instructions was that even on days when you don't have a lot of time to put in a swimming practice, for the few minutes that you do put in, make sure that your form is correct. So when you're feeling sick, make sure the form is correct and you're with the breath. It is doesn't require that much to breathe comfortably. One breath, then two breaths, then the next breath, then the next breath. As John Fung said, it's a little thing, but you stick with it. Do it continually. And it's in the continuity that you begin to learn new things about yourself. Because the mind does have this tendency to jump around. It goes from one state of becoming to another, and there's a little blanking out between the states. A lot of things go on during that blanking out, and you want to be able to see that. So you need this quality of being continuous in your focus, being continuous in your attention. If you want to see the things that are going on inside, because everything you need to know is happening right here. So if you're not watching carefully, you allow yourself to get distracted. The mind puts down a curtain and you're content to be blinded to what's going on. It points your attention someplace else. It's like an arrow that's pointing in one direction. Think about that koan about the, the finger pointing to the moon. 
they usually say, well, you don't look at the finger, you're supposed to look at the moon. You should ask yourself, well, why is your mind pointing at the moon? Why is it putting up that finger, pointing away from itself? That's what you have to look into. And you're going to see that only if you have this talent, or you develop the talent, to be as continuous as possible in the practice. Whatever comes, waves may wash over you, but they wash away. You don't let yourself get drowned. Because you realize this part of the mind is larger than any wave that can come at it. And that's all it is, just a wave. It comes and it goes. Your awareness, remind yourself, is larger. It's larger than anything the world can throw at it. So don't make it small. Don't allow it to be covered up with curtains or deceived by arrows. Right here is where everything is going to happen. And so you want to be continually aware right here, and not get distracted. And so learn to develop this quality of a long-distance meditator. We're in this for the long haul. Look at the way you talk to yourself. And when you find that you have wandered off, remind yourself it's just a little thing to move back to the breath. Wherever your thoughts may go, the thought itself is right next to the breath. That way it's no big deal to come back. And it doesn't require a lot of brow beating. Just a little nudge. And if you learn how to keep on nudging, nudging, nudging yourself in this way, you can stay on course. <laughs>